Hi, Grade 6. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of review today of some work with interior angles that we've done. Now that is because we were going to solve these questions in class, but we ran out of time and it became a whole thing. Uh, I had to really rush through the explanations I gave, so today I'm going to give those explanations with a little more slowed down time, a little bit more walking through the specific details of everything. So hopefully you can see what's going on when we solve them. Now an important thing here is that all of this is based on the way that we know the interior angles of any polygon. And the sum of the interior angles of any polygon can be solved, uh, can be found by using a really, really simple equation. That is that the interior angle sum will always add up to 180 degrees times the number of angles in that shape minus 2. For a triangle, that means 180 degrees times 3 minus 2. That's 180 times 1, which hopefully you know is 180 degrees. In the case of a quadrilateral, well, that has four angles. So that's 180 degrees times 4 minus 2, or 360 degrees. The interior angles of any quadrilateral will add up to 360. If I go further, I could say a pentagon, an octagon, a, a, a hexagon, a heptagon, whatever. Well, I'll take however many angles it is, and I can tell you that for, say, a heptagon, a seven-sided polygon, well, 180 times 5 is 900 degrees. So if I have a seven-sided shape, I know that the interior angles will always add up to 900 degrees. All that you need for grade 6 are these two. Quadrilaterals are 360, triangles are 180. Knowing that you can take it further is a bonus, but kind of a cool bonus, I think. So there it is. Now, using that, as well as our knowledge of complementary and supplementary angles, you've been asked to find some missing angles this week in your math work. And so I'm going to walk you through three example problems right now that shows us how we get there. In this case, I've been asked to find both x and y, two missing angles here. I can find y very simply and very easily, actually. To do that, all I need to know is uh, that this, grabbing my mouse pointer here, that this is a right angle, which means that y and 48 degrees are complementary angles. Complementary angles are ones that will add, always add up to 90 degrees when you put them together. y plus 48 should equal 90, because they're complementary. That also means that y is 90 degrees minus 48 degrees, which means y is 42 degrees. That's done. That's easy. Now, that doesn't help me get x quite yet. x is a bit tricky here, because to get x, I need to know what this is. And I don't know what that is right now. Except it's not very hard to figure out. Here's the thing. If 37, 48, and this add up to 180 degrees, and that question mark, and this guy here, also add up to 180 degrees, then I must know that this angle is going to be the same as 37 plus 48. This angle is the same as the sum of these two. Because this is going to make 180 when added to these two, and make 180 when added to this. Whatever this is, I don't actually need to know this to figure it out. This is 37 plus 48. 
which in this case, uh, which is 85. So I'm just going to erase that and replace it with 85 degrees because it's it fits better than 37 plus degrees plus 48 degrees. Now, I could go about this the long way. I could say, well, 37 plus 48 is 85 degrees. That means question mark is 180 minus 85, which means question mark is 95 degrees. Do, do, do. <laughs> And then this one here, this guy over here is the supplementary angle of 95, the thing that I can add to 95 to get a straight line, which is 85. And now I once again know it's 85 degrees. But I didn't have to do that work. I could have just said, oh, the supplementary angle here is the same as the sum of these two. So the sum of these two is 85 degrees. This is 85 degrees. That out of the way, whether you went about that the long way or through combining knowledge of supplementary angles and doing some high-level business there, I now know that, again, the interior angles of this triangle here are still going to add up to 180 degrees. That means x is 180 minus 42 plus 85. I add up the other two take them away from 180, and whatever's left must be my x. So x equals 180 minus 42 plus 85, quickly off the top of my head, should be 127. Which means x must be, uh, what is that, 53? 53 degrees. 42 plus 85 plus 53 makes 180. I know my x and y. And just to keep things nice, if you're answering this in long form on a piece of paper, please circle your answer to make it easy for your teacher to find. All right, we got two more examples. Let's burn through them. In this case, it's actually easier than the other question, I think. But I'm not, I'm only given one interior angle. The other one I'm given is a supplementary angle. I know that 122 is the supplementary angle of M. So M and 122 need to add together to make 180. So M equals 180 minus 122, which makes M 58 degrees. Well, n, I can do very similarly to the way I figured out x over here. n is 180 minus the sum of the other two, 58 plus 66, which makes n 180 minus, uh, what is that one? That's 124, I believe. Minus 124, n is 56 degrees. Done. Circle these. And that's just through knowing the supplementary angle of one and the actual measurement of the other. If I know the supplementary angle of something I'm looking for, all I have to do is take a hundred is take that measurement away from 180. What's left is the angle I want. And once I have two angles, finding the third is just what gets us to 180. Last example here. Here I have a supplementary angle, two actual measurements, and one missing angle. And I have a quadrilateral. With a quadrilateral, I know that all four of these angles have to add up to be 360 degrees. Well, the easiest one is to find this supplementary angle first. I've got 95 degrees, which means that whatever this is, is the rest of the way to 180 degrees. 
180 minus 95 equals 85. This angle here is 85 degrees. Well, just like with the other ones, A now equals 360 minus the other three angles put together. 85 plus 73 plus 104. Let's add them up in a separate thing just so I can stack them. It's a bit easier if I can stack them up, right? 104, 85, 73. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 3 is 12. 1 plus 0 plus 8 plus 7 is 16. And 2. So A equals 360 minus 262 which means A equals 98 degrees. Cool. That's done as well. We are most of the way there. We just have one more example to finish recording here, and we got it. And that is because in the final part of this assignment, I also ask you to tell me how many angles from a quadrilateral you need to measure to be able to tell me the rest of the angles. You need to run by I'm going to pause recording for just a second. Okay, I think we're back. <clears throat> now, for that, there are some quadrilaterals where it's tricky. This example one here, I can't just measure one angle and know I'm done. I actually need to measure at least three of them to know uh, what, well, at least three of them. I need to measure three of them to know what the fourth is going to be, because none of them are the same. They're all uneven. But with something like a parallelogram or a rhombus, where even though you don't have all 90 degree angles, and therefore just know right away what they are, like with a square or a rectangle, with a parallelogram or a rhombus, you do know some things that mean that you only actually need to measure one angle to be able to figure out the rest. Let's see how that works. Here I've got my parallelogram. Now, just knowing facts about parallelogram, I know that opposite sides are equal to one another, and opposite angles are equal to one another. That means that this angle and this angle will be equal, and this angle and this angle will be equal. So in order to know all four of them, I only actually need to measure one of them. I've got my protractor off to the side so that we can do that. Let's get started. Uh, might as well do this. Now to remind you how to use a protractor, just in case you've forgotten, this pair of perpendicular lines at the bottom, you need to line up so that where they cross is over the angle I'm measuring. So we'll start here with that. We'll have them cross over the angle. I then need to make sure that one of my lines from my uh, intersecting lines is lined up with the zero. It is. And then I need to count either from the outside or inside zero and stay along with that. So since the line that I'm measuring here is on the outside zero, I'm going to use the outside numbers. So let's do that. If I can, there we go. Go from 0 to right here. Now this uh, goes through two numbers, 40 or 140. This is obviously an obtuse angle, so I'm going to use the obtuse measurement. If I don't want to think in terms of acute or obtuse, I can just think I started from the outside numbers and 140 is the outside number. Otherwise, I know if I have a choice between 40 and 140, this is very obviously not 40 degrees. It's too big for that. So, get the protractor out of the way, and now just say this angle is 140 degrees. I've measured exactly one angle, but here's the thing. This angle also has to be 140 degrees because they're equal. From one measurement, I now have two angles. I also know that all four angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. So if I take away 
those 240s from 360, I'll know what's left. 360 minus 280, which gives us 80 degrees. My two missing angles need to add up to 80 degrees. Now those two missing angles are equal to one another. So instead of trying to subtract anything, I can just split this evenly. 80 divided by 2 is going to be what each of these other two angles are. That is 40 degrees. From just measuring one angle, I am able to tell you what all four angles in this parallelogram are. I've got my obtuse angles are both 140, and my acute angles are both 40 degrees. You can double check that. Line up the protractor here. Oh look, 40 degrees. Starting from the inside zero, I get to the inside 40. This all checks out. And if I wanted to, I could add them up again just to make sure. 40 plus 40 plus 140 plus 140. Can do that here, I suppose. 140, 140, 40, 40. That really looks like 46. Let's just fix that. Trying to write with my computer in a vertical position rather than a horizontal one today is making this difficult. I apologize for messy writing. A lot of zeros makes zero. Four fours is 16, carry the one. Oh look, 360 degrees. Nailed it. Right now this is all still very theoretical. There's not a lot of practical application for this yet in grade six. However, as you get older, this starts to become really important stuff to know about for physics. Calculating angles based on incomplete information is going to be a huge thing when you start working with the mathematics of motion, of acceleration, of trajectory. If you are interested in any kind of rocket science, you'll need to get very good at this, for example. For right now, though, it's enough for us to be, start memorizing these facts and working with them. So, thank you for joining me today. Have a great rest of it, and take care of yourselves and each other. Peace.